Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is a special program that focuses on the one and only thing that we Africans celebrate, May 25th, African Day. On May 25th, 1963, we have seen the formation and the foundation of the African Union and the then Organization for African Unity. And now, in order to give us everything about the organization of the African Union, the historical backgrounds and every historical anecdotes available, we've got you a historian, a chief curator at the IES, Institute of Ethiopian Studies, that is Associate Professor Ahmed Zakaria. Thank you for blessing us with your time. Thank you. Without further ado, let me go to the first question that I'd like to ask you. That is with regards to you as a chief curator. What does chief curator mean? You have been there for more than 37 years, to be exact, 40 years as a chief curator at IES. And uh, what does chief curator mean for somebody who doesn't know? Well, it's good to start with my background there. I mean, I joined the uh, Salvador University, then it was Idol Sundance, first university. I was a student of uh, Bada Mariam Laboratory School. Uh, I was in 70, 71 uh, entry. And then uh, I, I, my choice was hist uh, uh, not history, but at least it was law, because I came through Bada Mariam. I was not able to shift uh, my gear. So I ended up in. Uh, majoring history and minoring English uh, as a secondary s uh, school teacher. But for, fortunately, most of our uh, Badamaram students were bright of the day, but uh, the university was also having problem of uh, recruiting uh, lecturers. So we, most of us ended up in the university. Uh, I graduated after lots of ordeals, you know, it's not that easy. In our time, we have to uh, disrupt our classes for a year or two and then come back. And so it took me about eight years to finish. I'm lucky one compared to my other friends who were struggling 10, 20 years to have their first degree. So I graduated in uh, 1979. Uh, I joined the Department of History. Uh, I was teaching for about two, two years. But my worry was uh, addressing big crowd, and so I had a stage fright. Uh, I still have sometimes, but at least I'm better off today. Uh, so I had to abandon teaching and shifted. The other factor was my interest was also uh, archaeology. I was uh, was keen to do uh, archaeology in my master's, but at least there was no advising body to guide me through and so I uh, had to abandon history and join the uh, Institute of Ethiopian Studies in the museum section uh, playing with objects and so uh, my life ended up you know uh, dealing with objects talking to objects uh, about 40 years more or less uh, so um, as a chief curator we were supposed to run the museum and uh, stage exhibitions now and then. Luckily, I was uh, able to transform the, the old uh, system to the new one with the help of uh, society, society of Friends of uh, Institute of Family Studies, which is actually named SOFIS. Uh, with their support, I was able to transform uh, the whole lot, you know, the whole uh, exhibit areas. Uh, so now, it just became one of the the best in the country, not only in the country, but at least some guidebooks were uh, suggesting to visit it twice. One, when you come in and as an appetizer, and when, when you leave uh, to check your notes of what you have uh, experienced in the country. So uh, it was an ordeal, at least I spent about five years transforming it. Uh, as a curator, I had to deal with nitty gritties here and there and uh, luckily we we managed at least having uh, and ch transforming the name from ethnography to 
Anthropology Museum. And so if you go now, you're dealing with context rather than uh, objects, you know. Uh, uh, early stages of uh, museum exhibition mainly were focusing on objects, you know, without giving you uh, context. In our case, we we came up with thought processes and we took some themes and so we play around these themes to represent the whole country. It's not that easy, you know, we're dealing with uh, 80 plus languages, cultures and uh, somehow we managed the, the, the anthropology section to, took us uh, quite a time. Uh, the rest is uh, the art section. The art section was not that difficult because we're dealing with only two, three items, and so it was not that difficult to select and present uh, the icons of the country and wall paintings. A little bit uh, of crosses. These are the three major areas in the art section. We have a small temporary exhibition area that we have to you know, have temporary exhibitions once in a while. And with the process, we also stayed uh, Ethiopian musical and instruments. Uh, that section is also uh, beautifully presented, but through time it's getting dull every day and we need revamping it and giving it some new life. Uh, these are the structures that we were dealing with. We are also uh, lucky to open the bedroom of Mahail Salasi after quite a time, you know, uh, during the dark time it was not easy to open it and now it's becoming one of attraction centers, and we have a bit of coin, coin collections and the like, and we have a set of uh, the stamps we are interested in uh, philanthropy. Uh, one can come and enjoy the collection. So, in in a nutshell, my responsibility was uh, dealing with this whole uh, gamuts of uh, museum activities. Uh, the collection sec section by itself and the conservation uh, documentation, these are all areas uh, that we are involved in. So I don't uh, complain because uh, talking with objects gives you new dimension, new life. Each and every object that you touch has its own story to tell and so uh, we are busy every time. And also discussing with these objects with uh, guests of the place and so uh, you you, you are every time learning and teaching, and so the process is extremely exciting. And luckily, I spent uh, quite you know, fascinating. After this well, after uh, I've been there in the campus for about 50 years, mm. it's time to say enough is enough. And so, I get my I, I joined the university as a youngster of 18, and I had to leave it at about 17, so quite a time to to abandon it. Uh, it's not abandoning it because I am also involved with SOFIS and once in a while we have lecture series and also involved with uh, little details uh, of the activities and so I know about it, uh, but I'm not as active as used to be. Besides being a chief curator at IES, you've been a teacher. What was teaching like for you? You loved it? Well, at least mainly I taught in the university uh, first year history course, general history course, Ethiopian history course, and uh, that was uh, the ordeal, you know. All students should take uh, history 101, uh, 102, I think 102. Uh, so dealing with uh, 200 students at a time is not that easy, and so uh, we were covering at least uh, the usual crash course of uh, history of the, the country. Uh, it has to be revamped once in a while. Now it is uh, transformed to uh, inclusive. But at least it was more or less as elements of uh, the country, but uh, there were missing gaps here and there. One has to consider uh, revamping it once in a while. You know, uh, a consciousness is also another dimension. Life is not the same all, all along, and so we have to grow and accommodate uh, uh, the whole history of the country. And now they are struggling to make it uh, complete. 
and exclusive history, more or less it was. Uh, now our attempt is to make it inclusive history. So that is uh, the ordeal. And my, I had some drawbacks in all teaching history because it mainly focused on the north, uh, so there were lots of lacunas here and there. And, uh, and I, I get bored of personalities, and my interest was uh, doing archaeology and discovering new knowledge. Uh, that was my dream. Unfortunately, I couldn't fulfill my dream. Uh, later on, I was able to do a master's in, uh, in Oxford and did some uh, numismatics in two satisfy my urge of uh, archaeology. Uh, overall, you studied museology. Hmm? You studied museology. yeah. But, uh, uh, well, at least dealing with the museum studies, you know, uh, running the museum and uh, um, theoretical debate about the museum, because museum is uh, it's just like a library, you know. Uh, it's, it's a book form, here is object form, you know, more or less the service is more or less the same. You collect, you document, you exhibit, you discuss the same thing with books. You collect, you document, you know, uh, let it uh, uh, be ready for the readers. And uh, more or less, uh, the purpose of museum and library are the same, uh, but the objects are different. And so uh, we're st studying with how to run museum and the big de debates about this, because we are dealing also with representation of cultures, which is not easy. Who represents culture, you know, uh, at what cost, and what angle, and these are all theoretical debates which is not resolved yet. And issue we are discussing at that time also restitution, who owns the objects, and who are the owners, you know, these are all issues. Now we are dealing after 30 years, you know, uh, now Africa is rising, and claiming its objects, and so uh, the debate goes on. It's lively discussion that we are having in. As a person who have been working for uh, peace and harmony in Ethiopia, how can we bring peace in Ethiopia? What is the right path in order to bring peace in Ethiopia? Because Ethiopia is grappling with challenges, including the coming of TPLF and Shane. Uh, TPLF is preparing for war and Shen is creating problems here in Ethiopia. What is the right path for peace here in Ethiopia? Well, uh, peace is not that easy uh, object that we throw it as, as we like. Uh, we have to strive every day to get your peace of mind, you know. As an individual, uh, you have to strive with your thought process, you know, it starts there. You're fighting with thought process and trying to reconcile your thought process before going to uh, outside of your mind, you know. Uh, so uh, the struggle is common, you know, conflict is natural. Uh, you have to resolve uh, issues uh, within your mind and then with your family, with your neighbors. and regions in the country and the world at large. Uh, so you have to struggle for it. Uh, uh, fighting is easy for me uh, and terminal. But peace is ongoing process all, the, all year round, uh, all your, your life. Uh, so conflict could happen, happen any time in life. And the uh, wisdom is how to resolve this. Uh, conflict. Um, so you have to go to the root cause of the conflict and then try to understand it and uh, come up with uh, alternative solutions. You know, there is no one solution. You know, you can bring hundred uh, view viewpoints and then you can pr prioritize them and try to deal with them one by one. You know, and until you come to equilibrium of peace. Uh, in my case, uh, I grew up as uh, Shumagili. My name was Shumagili from <laughs> the start, and so uh, it's part of me uh, dealing with peace. Um, well, at least formally, I joined uh, our, my small uh, 
civic society which is called Alam uh, 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 it's a long name uh, dealing with world peace and uh, reconciliation and uh, harmony uh, uh, commission letter yeah I was I'm still involving in different organizations. Uh, whoever invites me on issue issue of peace, I'm there. You know. uh, I'm spending my most of the time uh, uh, discussing about peace wherever possible. Uh, so uh, uh, I joined the group about 20 years ago. Uh, at that time, we were, we were facing problem with religious uh, organizations. Uh, most, almost all of them had inter and intra problems. Uh, we were dealing with after uh, communist rule or after the Dirk, uh, where religions were not favored, and so now we are adjusting ourselves to new reality. Uh, so the confusion was natural. Uh, so they were having intra, inter uh, debate and conflicts and glitches here and there. And the elders of the country came up and discussed about the issue. And they agreed to have a big conference, um, which is consisting of more than 300 individuals all over the country, to discuss issues of religions, uh, the issue of uh, the, the situation of religious institutions. Who is that mentioning right and left? Because all, almost all, except Catholic Church, most of them had their grumblings. And so uh, uh, that meeting was not able to uh, be realized for different reasons. Uh, so because of that, we established Salam and Nagabra and So with that, uh, we were able to. Uh, discuss um, pertinent issues, uh, resolving personal problems, community problems, religious organizations, uh, and in, in fact including the political issues of 2005 uh, confusion. And so we were able, for more, for more or less, uh, championing the gathering of the elders from different parts of the country to resolve the political misunderstanding of the day. Uh, at least <coughs> it was, we lost lots of youngsters, unfortunately, uh, but somehow we have to resolve it. You know, you cannot uh, bring dead bodies, but at least uh, you are responsible not to add more. Uh, so, uh, with the pressure of our organization with other groups, we were able to um, became go between the, the prisoners' group and the government and finally at least resolve the, the problem, uh, whether it is bitter or sour. Uh, we were able at least to solve our problem internally without going out, out of the country. <coughs> So that was uh, uh, our po political experience and with religious institutions who we, we were involved with lots of uh, uh, societal awareness and uh, we were also involved with the school system, with elders, with uh, elders and we had lots of uh, discussions and uh, workshops and the like uh, for the last 20 years. So and when when you consider uh, our activity, we feel at least least uh, we feel small gap in our our problem of the country. And I could consider at least not only our organization, overall elders uh, in the country might have contributed 20 to 30 percent of uh, peaceful situation of the country, mm. and then we formed a larger national elders council. Uh, I was uh, involved with that, and uh, still that National Council is still active in doing lots of uh, reconciliation at the bottom le line. Uh, we were able to discuss uh, conflicting regions and trying to come up with solutions and recommendations. 
our problem was follow up. Uh, uh, so, no, financial problem and support of the government, these are the two uh, drawbacks. You know, if we could have managed uh, enough uh, financial support and support of the government, we could resolve the lots of serious uh, problem uh, when it comes to conflicts. So, uh, in uh, hindsight, I see the importance of elders in the country, religious uh, fathers, extremely important because we are still evolving and we are still traditional society. And so, uh, you could resolve the problem without uh, major effort. Um, but keeping it up is our oh, dilemma. Uh, the world is changing, and at least the uh, information revolution is with us, and uh, the type of armaments that we're having is also another dimension, uh, but still, but still, uh, we could do a lot uh, locally uh, with uh, elders and uh, religious uh, fathers. If we concert our energy, uh, we're able. I can cite lots, cite all, lots of uh, examples of uh, what you have. I've passed through the last 20 years, and then I joined the Commission, uh, Peace and Reconciliation Commission. I was a member there, and uh, we tried three years, uh, lots of uh, efforts, but the problem was uh, there were legal issues that we were not able to resolve, and, um, and the combination was not uh, favorable to a certain extent. We were about 40 of us were not able to come together uh, for different reasons and the nature of personal is also another dimension that we have to uh, consider. And so overall, uh, we opened up lots of uh, discussion points, uh, institutions for uh, the new one. Uh, there is a dialogue commission. Uh, I hope, uh, uh, and my hindsight understanding is that uh, we were supposed to come later on after uh, dialogue commission completes uh, ordeals because uh, we came first before the discussion and so the discussion has to come in and then uh, elders and uh, religious uh, fathers and other concerned individuals are going to resolve the problems later on but uh, the discussion has to come first and we'll see how it goes on uh, so uh, my experience in different aspects of religion, uh, peace movement in the country. I, I joined, I don't know, I attended uh, lifelong, uh, one could say, uh, organizations dealing with peace. And so I feel that I have rich experience. I want to take you to the issue of the National Dialogue because you have raised it in the, one of the discussions that we have. What is your take on the incumbents' uh, efforts to bring about the national dialogue and uh, how best can we use this opportunity in order to unite us, in order to bring about a peaceful Ethiopia? Though we are under constant challenge by the TPLF, who is preparing for war and that of own action? Well, at least we have to be local, you know. Uh, if we are not local, then we blame ourselves unnecessarily and waste our energy. Uh, we are not uh, island by ourselves and we are part of the world. And uh, we have to understand the external pressure as well as our uh, internal drawbacks, you know. Uh, we are poor to start with and poverty is our enemy number one. And we don't know how to tackle poverty. If we don't know how to tackle poverty, forget the rest. Uh, so basically, uh, every day your tummy is crying for food. If you don't provide, well, then you're going to be time bomb uh, for whatever peace uh, that, that there might be there. Uh, so it is intertwined. Uh, my, my dream and my wish is for the Dialogue Commission is to have uh, probably different approaches, you know, to tackle. I mean, they are working their program. I uh, hope they will tell us one of these days. Uh, but uh, it is issue of power and politics and the economic condition 
and the social relations that we have and diplomatic problems from outside. Uh, these are all issues that we have to consider uh, one by one with uh, ex extremely structured and well-defined way uh, without denying the, the voice from, from the bottom. Uh, so they start from the bottom, uh, as far as I, I feel that they do. So it's going to be the, poor, the voice of the, the poor. Uh, we have to understand what the poor is calling for and looking for a solution. And if we understand 80-90% of our population, we can do quite a long distance. Uh, the rest, the urban elite, uh, which is only considering power, grabbing power, uh, cannot solve the problem. Uh, I'm better off than you, and that is uh, Kabbalah Shibali type of uh, argument, doesn't solve problem. And so uh, the elites also should be conscious of the larger reality of the country and the external pressure that we are facing. Uh, with that, they can come up with their programs uh, to uh, solve this major hurdles of that they are facing. If not, uh, they are going to be problem victims. Um, so now, uh, as we are now in the crossroads, and so we have to define our existence. Uh, if we don't come up with a solution, then the uh, the sooner the better, you know, for for all practical purposes. But at least. We have to discuss, and so we shouldn't rush through uh, without uh, understanding and digesting our realities. So the three coming three years uh, might give us room to identify our major problems. The moment we are identifying our major problems, we can come up with solutions. And then the process is a hurdle, you know. Uh, you can define your problem, you can come with your dreams. But the problem is the, the process, and for the process you need institutions and maturity and lots of uh, factors involved in. Uh, so we can learn from um, others who have gone through this the same way that we are going, but at least we have to appreciate our own internal dynamics, uh, which I have uh, thought about it for a long time. Mountainous people have their own culture and uh, personalities, you know, they are adamant and that's our major problem, you know. Uh, it's not easy to deal with uh, mountainous people uh, and they, are, they envy their freedom and uh, their personalities and identity and so they don't want to budge in. Uh, so they have to understand the situation that we are in and come up with give and take. Uh, uh, processes, you know. Uh, if you consider uh, mountainous uh, people all over the world, uh, they are adamant, you know. Uh, Afghanistan is a good example for me. Uh, uh, from Alexander the Great up to now, uh, yeah, we cannot win them. Yeah, and so the whole world was now with them the last 30 years, not only America, I mean, the whole lots of them. Uh, they just couldn't win them. They have to finish them all. So that's our attitude here also. Uh, uh, we have to identify our strengths and weaknesses. We can fight our enemies, but slaughtering brothers doesn't solve the problem. You know, so we have to come to our senses and say, our enemy, number one, is our poverty. And how to fight poverty is the way that we have to use this adamant energy to resolve uh, poverty in the country. And so this, it, it needs lots of uh, multidisciplinary approach and how to um, come with uh, better tools, you know, how to uh, resolve our personalities, uh, the, the issue of relationships mainly, you know. And so if we know how to handle it, uh, we, it's the, the, the country is fighting country, you know, all our history was uh, it's not a peaceful country as such. And so uh, fighting is good if you dominate and evolve. 
but if you lose and uh, and become weak doesn't solve any problem uh, uh, so the intellectuals right and left from all over the country should come to their senses and see uh, how we can discuss real issues and help the commission to to at least to come with viable strong uh, ideas for a national dialogue later on uh, at least if you could sum up issues from the bottom some could be resolved while discussing it and so we can simultaneously do the two uh, but some are uh, uh, rigid and difficult to handle needs time to resolve so they can come up with uh, bigger ones and present us with their findings based on that uh, we can recommend uh, the whole country can recommend an institution to solve the problem and uh, if, they, if need be referendums here and there to come up with uh, sort of magnetic identities that we are looking for to represent the country whatever form of it you know we need icons we need uh, uh, thought process to to uh, cherish you know for ourselves and for our children you know if we don't have it it's really difficult uh, mechanically solving our problems so, so for that we need lots of discussion to accommodate and come to uh, reconciliation you know consensus based uh, solution to salvage the problem of 120 million People, we are not talking about this group, that group, this group. All are going to have equal right, uh, equal uh, uh, existence in the Ethiopian con condition. Uh, well, as the as the West say, uh, they say it. You know, local politics is local. You know, uh, most of the Western problems solved in town hall meetings. Uh, uh, they they, discuss, they decided there in the Warada Kabali level uh, whatever they are looking for. Uh, in our case, it has to come to the big big cities and uh, the big big political. Uh, uh, I don't want to accuse them, but at least the big political figures are manipulating their interest in it. And so the, we have to go back to grassroots and try to solve most of our political problems locally. Uh, so the rest is just coordination for the, the federal or for the regional uh, states to handle. Uh, if we could come up with a solution, and we believe in our people, you know, that they know their interest, you know. Uh, up to now we are uh, belittling our farmers or pastoralists uh, as if they don't know, uh, and we impose on them solutions. The same thing with our educational system, you know, we are imposing without, uh, we are just trying to having tabula rasa approach uh, that uh, we don't have any experience in and looking, epping different uh, educational policies uh, brought uh, disasters up to now the last hundred years if we do thorough research on our educational system. It is it's not yet grafted properly and so we're not uh, coming with solutions because uh, educated fields are still having not uh, enough experience to work or to be employed and they are left in the limbo. Uh, so these are all issues that we have to deal in the in the coming three years and I hope uh, I, pr I pray for them to to work hard as they can and uh, come up with major issues of uh, our politics and then economic. For economic uh, 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 section or sector, I have my dream in so I like uh, the major, major problem is land holding that we have to consider. Uh, land utility was one of our slogans, but it's not complete, and so we have to revisit land utility and see where is uh, our mistakes were and how to mend 
our mistakes or to evolve and come up with a better solution. The same thing with the pastoral societies, you know, the drought is coming every now and then and uh, uh, it's agonizing, you know, to um, see uh, emaciated children and uh, our animals are gone, you know. I don't know how many billions we lost the last six, seven year, weeks, years, uh, I mean months recently. And, uh, it's agonizing experience, uh, so we have to fight that, uh, at least to become human being. We have to at least address basic needs at, uh, as human beings. And so these are all areas, areas in the economic aspect and land, land issue is becoming a real uh, uh, contentious plus uh, source of corruption. And so uh, we have to deal with it whether it is difficult or not, or whether it is sweet or sour or sour, we have to deal with it and come up with a uh, solution. And same thing with our social relationship. We have uh, gone through different ordeals. You know, we based our ideology after the demise of the imperial state. And we tried with Marxism. The Marxism gave us two options, one class, the other is ethnic. Both are not working in our situation, and so we have to look for a better bondage in the in the social dimension. We have a rich uh, cultural and religious experience. We have to tap in and depend on the the values of our our cultures and religions, and uh, come up with a optimum solution for social relationship. When it comes to uh, diplomacy, we have to be careful, you know. Uh, uh, unipower, uh, unipolar, uh, polar it was there for the last 30 years, and uh, we faced lots of problems. We couldn't come up with a solution as such. The last 30 years we passed through, the world went through, I don't know, different agonies. Uh, multi Polars are coming, uh, but with difficulties, and we are becoming one of contentions. And so we have to be careful on that line also, how to resolve this uh, uh, bone of contention situations. It's not that easy. Uh, uh, one has to be wise uh, how to how to swim in troubled water. And so these are areas that uh, the Commission and the government and the people at large has to consider. As a person of uh, history, as a person who knows history very well, what is your connotation, your explanation about the African year and the African uh, day that we are celebrating on 25th of May? Uh, that has came to be one of the days that unites Africans in general. Tell us the historical anecdotes. Yeah, well, at least they started in uh, 1958, April 15, as uh, Freedom Day, Freedom Year. Uh, that was aspiring youngsters uh, were trying to free Africa had their dreams, you know, though they divided into campus, you know, one fast moving and the rest, the, the, the other one slow pace mover. This the, the two, just like what we have passed through, our PRP and the Mason, you know, the Jim Guzo and Natural Guzo type of things, uh, Mono River and uh, Casablanca. So uh, they had to come to Addis and resolve this problem, and uh, they changed it to liberation. Uh, but now it, there is no freedom, there is no liberation. I don't know this African day, African year. Uh, they are, some of them are using African year. At least the AU now is using it as African day. Uh, they fixed it in. Uh, in May 25th, uh, at least uh, I, I can go back to the 
formation period of 1963. I was young students in elementary school, and I joined the processions, you know, except um, receiving the um, delegations. Uh, and uh, it was really uh, from Mercato, from Wasan Segar, we used to go to uh, Bole Road, uh, halfway through Bole Road. And we really enjoyed it, you know. Uh, it's uh, full of energy and full of hope. Uh, that was in 1963. And with uh, closed circuit television that we uh, were uh, having a small window to see the realities. That was uh, the day that uh, I don't forget, you know, uh, clapping and cheering and the like. Uh, but the last 60, almost 60 years now, we celebrated the 2013-15th anniversary. Uh, I was also involved with this exhibition in IES uh, to celebrate the uh, 50th anniversary of uh, OAU, AU <laughs> combined, because part of it was uh, OAU and then the other part came in. Uh, so uh, the dream was there, uh, but realizing was not that easy. Uh, if you consider the, the agony Africa went through in the last 600 years, it's extremely painful. Uh, we went through slavery both in West and Eastern Africa. Uh, we lost our youngsters, uh, able-bodied, uh, left the country and we lost our bone marrow then. Uh, so we became weak. It was easy for colonizers to control us and uh, mutilate us as they like. Uh, with Berlin Conference, uh, uh, they didn't consider any, any human realities. They just simply mapped their uh, uh, slaughtering machines, you know, and the pain is there with us today uh, because they separated families, uh, and so the agony uh, all over Africa. We lost our youngsters in, in slavery, and now we colonial experience where the families were separated. Uh, the agony on Horn of Africa, uh, consider Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and the like, Djibouti, to certain extent, Kenya, Spetar, now Sudan. Uh, these are all. Uh, in colonial machinations. Uh, Ethiopia was de independent, yes, but Ethiopia is also colonial in making because they formed our boundaries for us. And so the agony that we, the continent, passed through in the last 600 is, is extremely painful. Then with the colonial experience, they completely transformed our realities. Uh, we are not, we are not uh, able to link the past with the present because the colonial period became a barrier now, uh, be it our educational system or culture or reality or identity. These are all messed up. And then now we are dealing with new colony. We are looking for our resources. Um, so it's a, again agonizing experience. Uh, um, every time uh, the new system might have its own linkage locally. So the linkage is there with uh, a few of our, uh, our brothers and sisters. So the agony is compiled again. And we're looking for a way out uh, uh, because uh, the the starting, the starting point was not easy for us. We are weak, and we are not able to transform to technology. Uh, still, with our monoculture, uh, with uh, our resource which we cannot control, uh, we cannot transform it. Uh, so, uh, all over Africa uh, is agonizing uh, experience that we are passing through. The though we. Uh, the hope is there uh, because we are now 1.4 or more billion uh, population with 
400 million youngsters. No one is going to challenge with us now. The young is there, the youth, the energy, the intellectual, the, the, we are leading. Uh, I, uh, probably we might uh, be on par with India. Uh, the only two areas that youngsters are coming into picture, the rest are getting old. Uh, so it's for us now, uh, Africa and India, uh, if we know how to handle our energy. Uh, up to now, we are not able to see our resources. Africa is in the middle of the world. If you take the, the map, it's really middle. In your east, you see Asia, and north of uh, Europe, and then in west, you see, uh, no, in the west, you see Asia, and the east, you see the two Americas and the, the two polars. And if you consider Africa is a middle, uh, and Africa is a mother for all. Mother Africa is the starting point for all. The resource is rich. We have water, we have land, uh, but we are poor. Uh, so it's uh, just like what we have already discussed for Ethiopia, here also applies. And now we have to come together, uh, put our energy uh, to resolve our weaknesses. So Africa is uh, rising, it's a renaissance of Africa now we are dealing with. Uh, it's not easy ordeal though. Uh, the fight is uh, uphill because uh, the rest have the benefit of ideology, economy, technology, communication, all, all what not. Uh, we have the resource, uh, we are weak in in infrastructure, we are weak in technology, we are weak in technology, communication and uh, uh, industry. Uh, so uh, the, the urge and the dream is there. Also the last 60 years, uh, African leaders were discussing, but they were not fulfilling it. Uh, one has to ask why. Uh, they were not able to because the uh, legacy of the past is still with us. Uh, we are not going to be enemies for, uh, for, uh, for God's sake. We are not, uh, we're not suggesting enemy to all, to all because we are the mothers of our all and so we are children all over the world. And so we are just asking for justice, uh, at least uh, equity of whatever uh, there is in our resource management issues. So if we come together and if we work together, we can win the day. Uh, so there are efforts here and there, uh, regional efforts, uh, but it takes quite a time you know, to establish an institution takes uh, quite a time. Maturing is another issue. Uh, so I feel in, in a sense uh, organizing is there because uh, uh, people are dying, uh, and especially our soil is denuding every day, and uh, sustaining big population is not easy. Uh, if you could manage with technologies, that's another issue that we have to discuss. But as it is, uh, tropical soil is thin, and uh, we have to be careful uh, how to utilize uh, tropical soil. So. We need our resource, uh, uh, in, environmental friendly solution to our problems. Uh, Epping uh, temperate climates problem uh, as a solution to our problem, uh, we tried it the last uh, 60, 70 years and it's not working. So we have to consider our situation better and so look around and study the continent itself. In grade 11, uh, we used to have Africa uh, in geography uh, classes, but I don't know whether it is now uh, the same or not. Uh, because in that uh, grade 11, we were able to aspire the continent as it is. Uh, so the moment you start aspiring the continent, uh, uh, you have common problem, you are looking for common solution. So collaboration was possible uh, with the text that you prepare and the, the, the students that uh, 
go through these courses at least can have common understanding of the continent. There were lots of maps in the grade 11 book. Uh, in hindsight, uh, I really appreciate that, uh, that effort. Now we don't know our Africa, we don't know our uh, village, and we are in the, uh, ho hovering in the air, with, especially with uh, the new technology. We are busy engaging uh, our insults in the back end. So these are all issues that the youngsters, the 400 young million youngsters, should consider. And uh, the day uh, could be celebrated uh, with the slogan uh, in continental way, not only now with uh, the solution the AU passed through, the resolutions that they have passed through, is going to be celebrated all over the continent, but it's not mandatory as it is. Only 12 countries uh, signed as a statutory uh, holiday. Uh, so uh, it's not all over the country that all over the continent that we are uh, having big day. Uh, somebody was suggesting that one of the AU meetings should be on May 25th might be one, but uh, my idea was, uh, I'm just considering May 25th could be a day for uh, launching the theme of the year. So this year it's agriculture, and so my suggesting, at least if we could have discussed this two, three months ago, uh, to see um, ministers of agriculture coming together and uh, charting their dreams together and declaring their hopes for the youngsters to realize uh, could have been the best because then the whole continent could have uh, uh, drummed the, the theme of the, the year uh, and could have come up with a result. Then the coming year we could have at least assist our uh, our energy and our effort and our results but it is just simply bureaucratic you know this year it is uh, resilience resilience uh, of uh, nutrition and best yeah but at least the impact that we are looking for 400 youngsters to realize 400 million youngsters to realize the slogan of the day uh, we need communication. I don't see a communication now. I haven't heard about it. Uh, in Ethiopia, AU is here with us, uh, but there's no life in it, you know. Uh, at least South Africa is doing lots of activities because they take it as a month. Uh, so they have jazz, uh, African jazz uh, festival in Cape Town, and there are activities. Uh, so probably uh, a few places here and there they might have lectures. I don't know what the 12 countries are doing. They take it as holiday, but uh, do they really mean uh, discussing the theme of the, the year and promising themselves that uh, the year after they are going to investigate the result of it? If you don't link it with activity, mm. then it's just simply a sm small holiday without any impact. And so we have to consider at least we take it this year as a preparation ground uh, they, because they started it in uh, 12, uh, 2012, I think. It's already t 10 years and plus. Um, but I haven't felt the uh, impact up to now. Uh, it's high time now the AU has to consider how to at least create especially for the 400 million youngsters, either through their gadgets, through mobile or radio, television, uh, to engage them. So now let's come to the impact of Ethiopia in the formation of the OAU. And uh, Ethiopia has had an amazing impact. And I'd like you to, 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 to give us uh, an explanation on the tenets, the basic tenets, on the formation of the organization. Yeah, the signatories were only 32 then, and now we are 54 because we are split in Canada. Like Amiba, that's another danger that we are facing. Uh, overall, uh, the remaining uh, 
colonized states now are free. So there were struggles for it, and uh, Ethiopia contributed a lot. At least the dream of uh, uh, Ethiopia is becoming, uh, mm. from the start, as a beacon of freedom and liberation was there, especially after the Battle of Adwa. Uh, the role of Ethiopia is, uh, is substantial uh, in realizing their, their freedom and liberation. So it is pivotal for uh, Africa, you know, to consider the independent, free, I don't know whether liberated, liberated is, but mm -hmm. there are different layers of liberation, and so we can discuss uh, aspect of liberation. So, but uh, the role of Adwa, uh, before that also, the um, Abyssinian Church and the Pan-African movement were looking for independent state was a dream, you know, especially from people from diaspora who were enslaved and uh, scattered all over the Americas and Caribbean. So they were looking for hope, beacon of light. And the only place was Ethiopia. Liberia was just their, their own creations, you know, so we cannot compare Liberia with Ethiopia. So Ethiopia became a beacon of hope for all. And the defeat of uh, Italians in the Battle of Adwa that gave a big boost for the, um, the experience of First World War and Second World War brought the youngsters, you know, to test freedom, you know, as a soldier, they were equal and free, but when they go back home, they were again enslaved, and so they had to look for their freedom. So Ethiopia was still a symbol for them. Uh, so the role of Ethiopia uh, is a paramount uh, as a beacon of uh, freedom. And we are not colonized, and so we don't have any hang-up of languages, uh, whether it is French or English or Arabic or Spanish or, or Portuguese, you know. Uh, we are free from that. And so the colonized masters were not able to let them have one language to communicate. So Francophone have their own way of thinking and manipulating their realities and Anglophone the same thing, Lisophone. Well the Arab states, the North they are at least they are in between, you know, whether they they are considered as an African or Middle Eastern influence and so they are part of us as yes, they are in the continent and they would consider them Africans, but at least they have different hats, you know. Uh, so the Arabic was not that uh, difficult to handle, but at least the French and English, the two became strong, Lysophone and uh, relatively smaller dozen. So the two became contending forces uh, to to come to come together, uh, and they were not able to see anywhere except Ethiopia to have their headquarters. Even if they wanted, they were not able. So they had to uh, bet on Ethiopia uh, because of languages. And luckily, we had expertise in different languages uh, to accommodate their needs and wishes. And we had enough Frank, French speakers, English speakers, Arabic speakers, and so we were able to handle the, the demands of the day, and by and by now, they are considering African languages to come into the picture, that's all good news. Uh, so the role of Ethiopia, yeah, well, now we can consider others also. <laughs> uh, at least there are Amharic, Oromo, uh, these are all uh, Hausa, and the, we can consider big numbers and at least which has uh, expansive uh, representation could represent uh, African dreams, you know, and expressing in our our uh, continental language. We have about 2,000 languages. We cannot accommodate all of them, but at least for large numbers, we can try at least make ways, uh, some service. So uh, Ethiopia has lots of uh, advantages 
it is near to the Middle East, and near to Europe, uh, and so it, it is in the East, but at least it's not far away. And Ethiopian Airlines has another dimension that we have to not to forget, linking the continent. So the, combined all of these, uh, Ethiopia is still uh, leading in the in uh, hosting the, the continent. Uh, we have to be proactive. Uh, uh, up to now, our relation was reactive, and so the demand comes in, then we adjust. But we have to be proactive and involved in African dynamics. Uh, that we have to do a lot of uh, awareness creation and uh, joint ventures. Uh, that should be taken seriously. In July 9th and 2002, we have seen the coming of the African Union. And that was in South Africa, and uh, that was a big news by which the members have changed from 30-something to 55. So what is the change like? Is it only nominal, or is it something significant? What was the change with the coming of the African Union? Well, at least first of all, the, all the name itself, you know, uh, the name gives the psychology and so for African unity, uh, union, uh, well, at least the aspiration was, you know, well, the dream of uh, Nkrumah and the like, you know, was trying to uh, realize the unity then and there, you know, United States of Africa was uh, the dream. Uh, after how many years? After 40 years, they had to come, let's take it again, you know, small piece, regional integration, communication, transport, you know, infrastructure. Uh, it's not there. And so dream by itself is good to wake you up and work. Uh, so the work was not there. The dream was there, but at least now with uh, the new name, uh, I think they try to better understand their drawbacks and the limitations and uh, reform the organization. Uh, the last well, how many years now? About 20 years. Uh, what impact? Uh, there are lots of agendas in front of them, but how many of them were realized? God knows. Uh, what do you think is the way forward? with the African Union, which is constantly grappling with the issues, with the challenges and problems of uh, civil war, poverty, famine, you name it. How best can the African Union and its members change the African Union as itself? Yeah, goes back to the, the youngsters for you, you know. Uh, collaborate and come up with your associations, you know. Uh, every time grassroots activities win the day, you know. Uh, it is with big institutions like AU, it's, it's, uh, it's inevitable, it's becoming bureaucratic. And with bureaucracy, you cannot solve uh, minor problems, you know. Uh, it has to pass through in different stages. But if we create movements, uh, youth movement, it's in your time, your energy, your, uh, your wish and your dream, uh, you could do lots of uh, activities without waiting for big funding and the like. No, fund is important, but at least the dream itself, is, especially if you are young, uh, now with technology, uh, communication is not that difficult. Mm. So whatever agenda the youth uh, is considering could uh, have an impact on the AU. So they have to, the challenge has to be from the, yeah, the, the youth. Uh, women are there, but at least uh, women are also in the youth, and so uh, youth might be the starting point for me. So if we challenge the youth, the energy of the youth could become triggering off to become active AU. 
Uh, otherwise, we are, if you are expecting your dream from AU, uh, as it is, it is bureaucratic and uh, it takes quite quite a time, you know, especially for um, the state also matters, you know, the, uh, committing one government to do something is not easy. Uh, the government representatives consider lots of factors not to, to commit themselves. But the youth, as it is, uh, wants to be free and from abject poverty. Uh, job creation is now is possible because Yesterday it was depended on land, and technology, or the industry, and then now we are talking of uh, the higher level. You know. With your you know, laptop, you can do lots of miracles. So we are now in the stage that you don't need land or industry to open up uh, opportunities. And so uh, you have to come with dreams, uh, the dream push back to the land and to industry and to other factors. Uh, but the dream has to come first. And I, I hope that uh, 400 million youngsters, if they are properly tickled, they could do miracles within no time. And now let's focus on the issues of the colonial legacy. Colonial legacy has had its impacts across Africa till date. What are the basic colonial legacies of Africa, uh, the colonial legacies that is against that of Africa? Let's start with the positive ones and then we can, we can go to the negative impacts and colonial legacies. Well, we have already discussed uh, it's a benefit to know long languages, but uh, the legacies made us difficult to communicate uh, the last 50 years. Uh, now. English is dominating for different reasons. Uh, French is becoming weak. Uh, they try to salvage it with, with, with big money, but uh, it's not that easy to sustain um, French, pure French in Africa. So uh, English is dominating. English is dominating science languages, business language, and academic language. And so uh, we cannot be free from English. Uh, uh, but it is colonial. Um, it has its own mm, positive side and as well as its negative side because with English mentality we lost our roots. Uh, we were fed with English literature, with English thought process and English what And so we, we are accommodating new realities and pushing our existence and our identity to the new one. Uh, we are not able to mix the two or combine the two properly. So that makes you weak, losing your identity. Uh, well, I, I feel that I'm universal identity, but uh, uh, all identities should be respected, you know, according to their time and space. Uh, so we have to consider that. Uh, balance that. Uh, the economy is another uh, dimension that we are having problem with. Uh, all leads to Rome, uh, as is to say now, all leads to colonial capital cities. That the, the mentality, the resource, and the, the holidays that we have, the, the educational system, you mentioned them all. So we are not African, we are the children of these uh, colonial capital cities. Uh, Ethiopia is exceptional, but Ethiopia is also part of them now. Uh, though we, we feel that we are boasting, we are free and the like. But uh, the energy is stronger. And uh, with uh, global reality, virtual reality, we are absorbed to one global system uh, that, that affects our balance. We are not in equal footings with, with them, and so we are the loser side. So how to balance is another area that we have to consider. And the cultural and the others are more or less the same with the language, if you consider language and culture the same. Uh, so we are affecting 
our cultures and language through colonial uh, heritage. So these are the drawbacks that we are having. The positive side, uh, Africa is rising uh, with uh, better understanding of our resources, our energy uh, linkage. Uh, we can do a lot, uh, at least considering the last 60 years, could it was the norm of power grabbing, but AU now is against it. And my idea is also to extend this. Any type of power grabbing anywhere could be condemned. Uh, so at least we can resolve our local problems if it's condemned by AU, whatever form of it. Uh, uh, looking for power uh, by force uh, should be condemned. At least one has to wait five years, whether it is dictatorial or not, uh, to get the power through, through the ballot. Uh, so uh, if we have better linkage, uh, better infrastructure, uh, with uh, new, better technologies that we are endowed with, uh, we can solve uh, most of our problems. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, awareness. Uh, Africa is big, Africa is young, Africa has a resource feeding the whole world. I, I don't want to go into details of minerals that we are uh, losing every day uh, without uh, our notice. So we have to neg negotiate and bargain on that line. The youngsters should be vanguard of that, you know, protecting the resources of Africa. Uh, it's not greed that I'm uh, proclaiming, but at least balance. Uh, if they come with technology, with our resource, we can jointly come with some solution of sharing. Uh, as it is, uh, it's extremely imbalanced and uh, it's affecting uh, African reality. I don't want to mention countries, you know. Uh, freedom by itself is not uh, enough. Liberation by itself is not enough. Uh, so if you don't have uh, economic equity, and so that has to be worked out uh, all, over, all over the country, all the continent. And so still back again, the youth should shoulder the burden. Uh, I want you to relate this uh, colonial legacies with what's happening here in Ethiopia. With the U.S. trying to uh, impact Ethiopia in a negative way by putting these punitive bills, that is HR 6600 and S3199, that is purely a colonial legacy in the impacts of imperialism and neocolonialism. What's your take on that? Well, uh, at least I've uh, discussed this uh, passing remarks. I don't want to go into details, but uh, the last 30 years, uh, unipolar, unipolar uh, reality uh, affected us a uh, lot, and so we have to consider multipolar world, you know, to have some breathing space. Uh, otherwise, we, if we uh, are here to condemn it or to condone it, it doesn't solve the problem. At least we have to solve some balancer we need uh, right hand and left hand, right wing and left wing to fly. And so we need balanced world. And as it is, it's not. The uh, Security Council case uh, is a good example. You know, how many times we were there. We are poor and we cannot affect anyone. But unfortunately, because of our strategic interest and resource my, uh, interest, we became born of contention. And so. Uh, not only one one country, but affected by direct or indirect by others. And so uh, that's why I'm saying that the diplomacy has to be worked very well. I'm not in the field of diplomacy. I have my own thoughts, but uh, I don't want to jump in and meddle with uh, uh, tender uh, balance areas. All right. Talking after with that of the colonial legacies, and uh, with that of the 60 plus years that the Africans have been free to be uh, 
in historical lane. I want you to tell us about these impacts in a way by which we are still blaming colonialism as one of the factors for the ills of Africa in order to blame it for the issues that we are facing here in Africa. Is it truthful? Is it something that we need to face? Because uh, Africans are grappling with lots of issues, uh, for example, you, you name it, civil wars, poverty and climate issues, famine and everything. Doesn't it seem like uh, trying to ignore the stark realities that we are facing rather than trying to come up with a solution because we are grappling with lots of problems but we are not trying to come up with a solution but trying to blame it on colonialism and its legacies. Yeah, well, at least one has to balance things. Uh, two for tango, you know. Uh, it's only uh, our problem is not only local; it's also external. So that's why I'm talking of global. If you understand properly the global balance, then you can look for better uh, solution. Uh, I don't want to condemn myself uh, as a culprit for whatever happening in the country. Uh, and also, I'm not going to insult uh, outsiders for my problem. It's a combination of the two. It's a matter of proportion. Uh, one has to do thorough research to come up with a proportion, what percentage that you can give to the colonial and what percentage to you give to your ignorance uh, and greed. Uh, so one has to do thorough research to come to any conclusion. Uh, but you can see uh, glimpse of these uh, areas, you know, greed is there, ignorance is there, uh, pressure is there, and uh, the combination and percentage is, uh, is the result what we are now in. Uh, so we have to change the combination. Uh, how is uh, food for thought, you know, at least we have to brainstorm. Uh, thoroughly, I, I don't want to come in a, to any solution easily, and, but at least I can recommend uh, that we have to discuss this uh, this reality properly, local situation. If you condemn an outsider uh, without uh, realizing your weakness, it doesn't solve the problem. And, uh, at least you have to realize your weakness and also the pressure from outside. So the two uh, are the uh, are the causes for our weaknesses all over the continent and uh, it's high time that we have to come and discuss 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 uh, break through and then chart your uh, dreams and realize it within the coming 10 years it's not overnight uh, definitely but at least if you have the proper direct line you can reach your destination fast if you're meandering unnecessarily, wasting your energy, it's, it's a real waste back to our Ethiopian condition. With our educational system, we were aping all over the world's uh, policies, but we are still poor. So the last hundred years, uh, I feel that we are not on the right track. Uh, well, each, each attempt might have its um, benefit, you know, 5%, 10%. But it didn't resolve 50, 60, 70 percent of your problem. If it's not, then it's not enough. Uh, if it's not enough, you look for alternative uh, solutions. You know, you have to know yourself first and then imitate from others. But if you are forced to imitate others, you lose your, yourself in the, in, in the process. And so the balance should be there, and uh, the new youngsters could come up with. Uh, combination of the balance. That was uh, a powerful presentation and a powerful explanation. But before we go, if there is any untouched part, if there is any final remark, I want to give you this opportunity. Well, back again to the youth, uh, 400 million youth is going to dominate in the world in the near future. It's not uh, far-fetched fake news, but it's hard reality. If we utilize our youngsters uh, only 
challenging challenge coming from India. The rest are getting old. Uh, where uh, our our resources are going to the west mainly. Uh, the best brain of Africa is in the west. It was in slavery. Now is brain drainage, and now we are trying to come up with our dream and like this diaspora coming back home uh, is a, a good sign and it's a really challenging news for all of us. Uh, now we are talking of brain bank, the diasporas coming back and seeing the reality. They are dreaming about their countries, not only Ethiopia but all of the whole continent. Uh, uh, they are dreaming in wherever they are. Uh, they are organizing every night, every day. Um, but when they come, they can see the reality, stark reality, the poverty that we are in and the situation we are in with their knowledge, with their uh, know-how, with their wisdom. We can do um, far more better uh, than we can do alone uh, here. So combining energies, uh, the, the youth that left 20, 30, 50 years <coughs> Africa coming back with their experiences, with their fund. I hope we can do miracles. Thank you very much for blessing us with your time because that was uh, an epic explanation with powerful statements. Thank you. Well, dear viewers, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for the facilitators. That's all that we've got for you in this special edition that is focusing on May 25th, African Day. You have a good time.